Good evening, family, wherever you are. We welcome you tonight to our healing service, and we pray that you will sanctify the area where you are. If you're at home, I pray that you will just be quiet and turn everything off. If you're here in the sanctuary, I pray that you will pray as we have the service and intercede for those who have needs. And I trust that you had a good week, and tonight we're going to pray for our nation. Our nation needs a lot of prayer concerning the election, and I pray God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have prayed, we've interceded, we've fasted for our country, and now we have to just stand, stand in faith that God is in control no matter what happens, and he will enable us to be strong for whatever lies ahead. So it's going to be also prayer of consecration. I just want to thank those Christians who ran for office and may not have won this time, but I believe God is building a mighty army of younger people that will rise up to the challenge as we see the need for our nation to be restored and come back to God. We also need prayer for Tim, and I pray that he's going to come tonight, but if not, uh, Tim learned that he had uh, lung cancer, and I met him last night at a celebration. So, Tim, we're going to be praying for you. And my hairdresser fell and broke her shoulder, and so I asked her to turn in, tune in tonight, and we're going to pray for him, her. And Pastor David De La Cruz is still in the hospital, so we're going to pray for him. He just had a weakness, and he fell, uh, and he's on the way to recovery. But if you're ill, or if you're troubled, or if you're bound by some sin or some habit, You've come to the right place. Jesus is here, and he knows what you need. If you just yield to him, he says, ask and you shall receive. So I pray tonight will be a night of your miracle. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you are indeed in charge of everything. And we come with grateful hearts that we know that you, the Almighty God, know the end from the beginning, and we will put our trust in you and not fear. We give you thanks, Lord. We pray for peace over our country. No matter what the results, Lord, let there be peace in Jesus' name. Let us Christians be the example of that peace in Jesus' name. And we pray for our president and all the, the people who ran for office, that they will have divine protection during this time, and we thank you because we know we can trust you. Tonight we pray for those who are sick. Families have people that are in their household who have been stricken, who have been in some kind of pain, and Lord, you see their needs and you will heal them. We release the healing anointing of your Holy Spirit tonight. We send your word of healing to everyone who needs a touch in their body. We stand in your word alone and a sacrifice you made on the cross. We lift up Jesus and we know that he will do what he needs to do to all those who believe. So we put our trust in you. We welcome your Holy Spirit tonight. Be with us. And we be careful to give you and you alone all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Just know that tomorrow night we're going to have our discipleship class, which we usually held, hold on Tuesday night, but because of the election, we switched it. So tomorrow night we have a program at 7 o'clock, and our youth program will be at 7 o'clock also. Well, tonight we're going to begin our service with a group of young ladies that sang for us the other day. The Lord sent them, as we told you the story, miraculously to our church. And a couple of them were members of the same choir in Locos Norte, the Philippines. And uh, Brother De La Cruz, Pastor De La Cruz, who's now in the hospital, is from Isabella province. That's kind of close to Locos Norte. So Brother David, he likes Facebook, and I know he's watching. This song is dedicated to you. In honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and it's going to be in your language. Amen. Salamat 
sa iyo Aking Panginoon Jesus Ako'y inibig mo At inangking lubos Ang tanging alay ko Ay buong buhay ko, puso at kaluluwa Di na makaya na maipagkaloob Mamahaling iya so gintong sinukob Ang tanging dalangin, o Diyos ay tanggapin Tanging alay ko naway gamitin Ito lamang ama, wala nang iba pa Akong hinihiling Di ko akalain Na ako ay binigyang pansin Ang taong tulad ko Di dapat mahalin Ang tanging alay ko Sa iyo aking ama Ang buong buhay ko Kaluluwa, di na makaya na maipagkaluob Mamahaling iya so gintong sinuob Ang tanging dalangin o Diyos ay tanggapin Ang tanging alay ko naway gamitin Ito lamang ama, wala nang iba pa, akong hinihiling, aking hinihintay, ang iyong pagbabalik, Jesus. Ang makapiling ka Kagalak ang lubos Ang tanging alay ko Sa iyo aking ama Ay buong buhay ko Puso at kaluluwa Di na makaya na Pagkaluob, mamahaling iyas No gintong sinukob Ang tanging dalangin O Diyos ay tanggapin Ang tanging alay ko Naway gamitin Ito lamang ama Wala nang iba pa Akong hinihiling Thank you. God bless you. I trust that Pastor David enjoyed that. I know he's going to text me. He likes to text me. And so I know that he appreciates that. And thank you, ladies. You're doing really great. And we expect to see and hear from you more. You're doing really great. We can practice with you. Well, tonight, my voice has been giving me kind of a, a trouble, so I've asked Carol to come and read the scriptures for me, and we're going to face, uh, be searching uh, the scriptures in Isaiah 53, and she's going to read a portion of the scripture that we're going to study. I'm going to go more extensively over some of these places, but you know, when we pray for the sick, 
And when we say that we do it in Jesus' name, there's a reason for it. And I know that when you've been stuck and sick for a long time, a lot of times you get discouraged or you think that time has passed you by or Jesus has passed you by. But I want you to know that God is an ever-present God. He's a present help in trouble. But his name is the great I am. So no matter how long you've been sick, he is the great I am. Time means nothing to him. So I pray that you will come expecting as we spread the word and preach the word which has life, that you will say, tonight is my night. Tonight I will rise up in faith. Tonight I will believe. Tonight I will rise up and walk in victory. So Carol, read those scriptures and then I will give the first portion of my message. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid, and it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised by our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him that iniquity for us all. Amen. Thank you, Carol. She's a helper in every way. This is kind of last minute. And I was, pray for me, I need healing tonight. I love to proclaim the word, but sometimes I talk too much. And I hear a lot of people say amen. I love to talk the word, but tonight in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, every time I read this chapter, I, my heart gets really touched. First of all, because of who is giving us, who brought our healing. Did you know that your healing was already paid for? If somebody says, you know, I went to a certain uh, gift store. Maybe I went to Macy's and I bought something for you and all you have to do is go pick it up. I think most of us would rush over there to pick it up. Tonight is to remind us that Jesus has paid for our healing. And going further from the top, I'm going to read some verses to explain who Jesus is. This first part is who is this Messiah? Isaiah was a prophet called one of the major prophets of the Old Testament, major because he, his book was about the longest written. There are four major prophets with long prophecies and then the minor prophecies that were a little shorter. And so Isaiah is one of my favorites. I said it's a miniature Bible because the thir first 39 chapters talk about uh, the... Uh, Old Testament covenants and so forth. And then this last 27 chapters talk about the Messiah, the coming Messiah and the promises. It says, who has believed our report? Have you spread the news of Jesus and people who really need Jesus cannot believe? I had so many people when I was ministering almost daily in the hospital until the pandemic, you know, we'd be referred to people who are really sick, and I would explain about Jesus. And some of them were dying, and yet they would say, I'm not ready yet. Never could understand that. Who has believed our report? Those of you who've been touched by the Holy Spirit, 
whose eyes have been opened, whose spirit has been touched. You know you've been born again. And from the time you've been born again, you know that the life of Jesus has flow, flowed in you. You've been filled with new power. You've been filled with new vision. You know that you, have, you are a new creature in Jesus Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And you've got a new vision, a new purpose, and a new plan for your life. Thank God for that, because there's so many that we consider lost, and they are lost because they do not understand that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, who came to touch us. And so we are grateful to the Lord that our eyes are open. I pray just about every day with tears in my eyes, thanking the Lord that he touched my life. And I see people bouncing up and down. Sometimes they love the Lord, sometimes they don't. I cannot understand that because I realize that the creator of the universe, the man, the God who had planned for mankind and who rules everything, loved me and saw me and gave me life. Goes on to say, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and is a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Every time I read this, I realize that the king of the universe, in order to rescue us from hell and in eternity with Satan, who destroyed us, who hurt us, who did everything to upset our life, to rescue us. Jesus came as a man. He didn't come as a king the first time. He was born in a little stable, in a manger which held the grass and the feed for the animals. He was put there as a little baby, no cute cradle. And then here it says, he grew up before him as a tender plant, very sensitive because he was filled with the spirit. He could feel the evil spirits, and yet he came from his holiness to this evil world because he wanted to rescue us. And then, you know, it said that there was no beauty that we should desire him. So many of us live our lives, our whole life, you know, trying to be beautiful, you know, trying to be more attractive and do things to help us being attractive, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when I think that Jesus, the king of glory, who could have made himself attractive and charismatic and, and awesome, chose to come with no beauty, that the beauty would be attractive to people so that they would come to him. He chose to be humble. When we think of being proud, think of what Jesus chose. He chose to come as a servant. When you think you want a position or you want some kind of power or you want to control this or that, if you're a Christian, just remember no matter where you are, if you're in a big business, if you're in the church, if you're in the neighborhood, if you're in some kind of organization, if you're going to be like Jesus, you will be the servant of all. And as a servant, we don't want to bring the attention to ourselves, but to God. So when we look to this Messiah that we're presenting tonight from the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, just remember that his choices were to be humble. He wanted us to come because we love him, not because of what he can give to us. A lot of people come, and a lot of ministries, I think, wrongly emphasize trying to make the gospel attractive by saying, if you come and you give, you will be rich, and your, your wealth is going to be multiplied, and, and you're going to be, you know, um, uh, more popular or whatever, more powerful, and God's going to give you favor and so forth. But, you know, the example of Christ is not like that. He chose, really, not to bring attention to himself. If you 
look to the Gospels and read some of the accounts of his miracles and his visits to different areas, you will find after he, gave a, he did a miracle, he said, shh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. He did not want to get any glory until the Father was going to reveal who he was and the Father was going to use him in humility. When he went to the cross, he went in humility. He was stripped and he was naked and he was humiliated. He was abandoned by his best friends, his disciples. The religious leaders scoffed at him. The Roman soldiers stabbed him and nailed him to the cross. I'm talking about this Savior whose life was given up so that we don't have to die. The Bible says, He that believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as we present this Messiah, don't come to him for what he can give you or what he uh, has been presented as. And you might think that, you know, people have made all kinds of cultish things about Jesus. He's very simple. And a lot of times the reason why people reject Christ because they feel like they cannot relate to him. If there's anything about Jesus that I want you to remember tonight is he's very relatable. He will come down to meet you where you are. I know so many, so many in recent months who have seen this suffering Savior, who have seen Jesus for who he is, who went to the cross, died for their sins, and when they turned their lives over to the Lord, he gave them new birth, and everything changed. He was despised and rejected of men. You know, as we talk about this, one of the hardest things we have to go through in life, especially if you come from a broken family or, or um, you felt like you were not wanted, the spirit of rejection is so dominant now. There's so many people suffering from rejection. So when we are rejected and think that nobody cares, I bring to you these scriptures here to remind you that Jesus was despised and rejected by man. He was a man of sorrows. He was acquainted with grief. Jesus cried when his friend died. He's touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Right now, there's somebody lonely in your sickness. You've just been diagnosed with something that seems incurable. I want to bring you hope tonight. Jesus sees you. He knows you. You may not know him very well, but let me tell you this. He knew you before you were born. You are put into your mother's womb as a purpose to be accomplished for him during your lifetime here. He knows where you are. I want to pray for you. I want us all to pray for you, whatever your name is. And there may be several like that, feeling so alone in your illness, so alone in your problems. You feel like, I may as well die. Nobody cares. I'm hurting. Even God seems far away. Let me tell you this. He says this. Jesus says this to you, draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Don't drift away from God. Call on his name right now. Just say, Jesus, I need you. I feel so alone, so rejected, so helpless. I don't know where to turn but I'm calling on you. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross and by my healing, my eternal life, I invite you to be Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord. Father, there's somebody out there you know. I pray you will fill their room their car, wherever they are, with your holy presence, Lord. Show up, Jesus. 
show up and let them know that they're not forsaken. You love them. You love them. You're picking them up right now in the name of Jesus. Let the shackles of darkness and demons that have oppressed you set you free right now. We set you free in the name of Jesus from oppressive spirits. The spirit of suicide must go in the name of Jesus. We bind those spirits, Satan. We command you off of God's children. You've come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. And so we look to this Messiah. We look to the one who received all of the evil things that we have suffered and he did it for us in order to legally purchase us freedom and life, victory and health. Encourage that one who feels so lonely tonight in their illness in the name of Jesus. I pray for Donna tonight. Oh, I pray for Donna. Fill her room with your holy presence, Lord. Let her look to you, comfort her, strengthen her in Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Jesus went through all of that. He loved us so much. He bore, he carried. He says he carried our sorrows, our griefs. That's why he says, cast all your care upon me because I care for you. When you talk to Jesus, he may seem invisible to you. He, means so, he might seem so far away, and you might feel like, I really don't know him. But he says, cast your care on me because I care for you. Don't wallow in self-pity. There's somebody who cares for you and not only cares for you, he can do something with your problem if you'll just give your problem to him. I trust that this word will encourage you that you will know that you are part of the family of God if you will receive the Messiah who went to the cross, who paid it all for your salvation, for your eternal life, and for your healing, for your mind, body, and spirit. I'm going to call all the girls up again. I'm going to ask them to sing a few songs for us to kind of worship the Lord. And I pray that... You will join in wherever you are and just worship the Lord and let the anointing of the Lord flow and let Jesus really touch you and bless you in Jesus' name. We're going to sing, I sing praises to your name, and Lord, I give you my heart. Amen. Sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. And great. 
deep to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. We This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Oh. Lord. 
Lord, I give you my heart, and I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your ways in me. Lord, I give you my heart, and I give you my soul. I I pray that you have loved Jesus enough to give him everything. You know, we hold so much to ourselves. We're insecure. We hold on to our possessions. We hold on to our every breath. We hold on to our talents. We just want to be sure and secure in ourselves. But when we come to Jesus, his example is that he went to the cross and he gave all to us. I really feel like that the only time you'll have peace, real peace, real joy, and real power is when you relinquish your all to the Lord and die to yourself as we teach in water baptism. Your old person is dead and you can do nothing from then on in yourself. But with Christ and in Christ, we can do all things. And so we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, and we're talking more at another time. But one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of healing. And all of you who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you can pray for the sick. It's not that we possess the healing gift, but the Holy Spirit in us can flow through people to heal them if we are willing to step out in faith and do it. Going back to Isaiah 53, we want to go over the scriptures that I usually quote when we are praying for the sick. I have seen people who are nearly dead, raised from the dead in the hospital. By just quoting this passage, these verses, reminding Satan that he was defeated at the cross when Jesus died and was wounded for us. In this 53rd chapter, the fifth verse, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs and our sorrows and carried our sorrows, and yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Every time you broke God's law, it cost Jesus something on the cross. They wounded him for that. He was bruised for our iniquities, our innate sin, the sin nature that we were born with, that seems to be within us, that seems to control us, that seems to rule us until we renounce it to give ourselves, our all, to Jesus who gave his all. And then in the fullness of yielding all to the Lord, he restores our joy, our peace, our life, our purpose. And we know that, as the scripture goes on to say, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. One of the things, epidemics during this time of the pandemic and, and COVID-19, is the loss of peace. People are fearful. They're in bondage because of it. And they forget that COVID-19 was defeated at the cross. It's defeated at the cross. And I don't care what they legislate and all, there's so many things going on now, that Jesus, when he went to the cross, was bruised for us. 
He was chastised for us so that we would have peace, peace of mind. I'll tell you this, you know how Jesus controls you, how much Jesus controls you by the level of peace you have in your heart. If you've given all to Jesus, I believe that you will have perfect peace because in Isaiah it says he will give perfect peace to those whose mind is stayed upon him. You think about him. Think about the cross. Before you go to bed at night, just don't worry about what's going on. Commit yourself to the Lord. The Bible tells us he gives his beloved sleep. He says he never slumbers, no sleep, so we can sleep, and so we can have that peace. We don't have to be worried about what's coming in or what's going out. We are covered by the sacrifice of the Messiah, whom we said was despised and rejected, humiliated and made sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes. They said, according to Roman law in the crucifixion, they would not only nail the criminal to the cross, but they would beat him. And those of you who have seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ, it's almost unbearable for us to look at what happened, but they would beat him 39 times. Actually, the Roman law says that they needed to be beaten 40 times, but in mercy, in case they miscounted, they practiced beating 39 times. And somebody said, I read a book written by a Jewish doctor maybe 30 years ago, and he was talking about the healing uh, power of the scriptures, and he said that there are 39 major diseases in the world today, and for every disease, for every disease, Jesus paid for your healing. Jesus paid. Just meditate on that. It's already paid for. Whatever you're suffering from, whatever emotion that you have that doesn't give you peace, whatever disease that has taken control of your body, Jesus paid for it on Calvary, and we need to believe and said, it's mine. It's mine, Lord. I believe. I will have stubborn faith because I believe that you sacrificed your life for me, and by your stripes I am healed he took the punishment so we legally can be set free and healed. Right now, think about the things that hurt you. Maybe it's just a mere headache. Maybe your toenail is hurting you. Or something that's small. And you might think, it's so insignificant. I'll just endure the pain. Or some of you, like my friend, new friend Tim, has been given you know, a bad prognosis about his lungs. I was so surprised that he was quite optimistic. He went out and became a polling official uh, during the um, voting yesterday. But I know, Tim, that you want Jesus to heal you. We prayed for you, and I prayed all day for you. I'm expecting God to set you free. I'm expecting God to heal you. So join with me. I want all of you who have people, your relatives, friends, or neighbors who have cancer, I want you to name them. And let's pray because although in God's sight, cancer is no bigger than anything else. Jesus defeated all of that. And yet to us, it seems so deadly. It's a, it's a word that scares us. First of all, let's ask God to take away the fear of that. And let's, God, and let's ask God to heal all those, name them. I'm going to pray for Tim. But others who have cancer, any kind of cancer, believe. Do you believe that Jesus can heal cancer? We've had so many in our congregation that have been healed uh, of cancer. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We stand in this promise. I've said it dozens of times. I've seen miracles of healing. People practically dead come back to life 
by the power of your word, because of the sacrifice you made on Calvary. I bind the spirit of fear that comes with terminal illness like cancer. I bind that fear. For you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Renew our mind. Give us your peace. You bought our peace with that punishment. Give peace to people. Holy Spirit, just fill that home, that room with your peace. In the name of Jesus. Look down, Lord, and touch those that are so fearful. In Jesus' name, we bind every cancer cell and cast it out of these whose bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Satan has no power over us. In the name of Jesus, we release your anointing of healing right now. In Jesus' name, by the blood that Jesus shed, the power of that blood, we rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. We call on your mighty name, Lord. We call on your mighty name to heal, to heal in Jesus' name. Orende keriamo shuri and daya daya da mo siki a daya la mo shiri a daya da mo sai a daya da mo kuri a mo sai. Lord, I pray that you will enclose these that have been diagnosed. Keep them, Lord, safe from people who will feed them fear, feed them doubt. Let faith arise in themselves for their own miracles. We rebuke the enemy that would like to steal and kill and destroy. You said with long life you will satisfy us. Yes, you will satisfy us. Be with those in their old age who have a weakness. They're not as strong as they used to be and they're discouraged. Lord, you said, if we wait upon you, you will renew our strength. We will mount up with wings as eagles and we will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. Lord, help us to rest in you. Help us to rest in you. Let's sing those songs of healing tonight, and we're going to just sing it over and over. Then as the anointing flows, I'm going to be praying. Expect God to heal you, whatever it is, tonight. Say, Lord, tonight, I believe my appointment is tonight. You will touch me. You will set me free. And though the manifestation may not be right at that moment, never change your mind about what God is doing right now. Let's sing and worship him. And let the Holy Spirit come on the wings of our praise and worship and anoint you wherever you are. Maybe you're not sick, but you know somebody nearby. Lay your hands on them. Pray for them. It could be somebody far away. Pray for them. Let's believe tonight that this healing night, somebody we know will be blessed because we believe for them or for ourselves. Let's sing it. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our
touch you. And now that I am no longer the same. sensation down both your legs. God is touching you right now. It could be something to do with your blood pressure. Let the blood pressure become normal right now. I speak that word to those who have high blood pressure. In the name of Jesus, be touched by the healing power of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody with tingling in your ears, you just hear these sounds. In Jesus' name, ask Jesus to stop them and take them away. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody with side pains right now. You're having a hard time breathing in the name of Jesus, and your side hurts. Say, Jesus, thank you for healing me. I receive that healing. I receive that healing. Somebody with a slight headache that's been bothering you and going up the right side of your neck and you're very miserable be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name somebody with sinus problems God is clearing up your sinus in the name of Jesus somebody's been touched your detached retina is being attached again by the blood of Jesus the power of the lamb amen 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 thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, rest on us tonight. Descend upon us. Touch us, refresh us. Give us wisdom, Lord. Let your anointing flow through every one of these as they respond in faith. You're not a respecter of persons. Signs and wonders can happen anywhere where there are believers. Help us all to be believers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Milton, do you know the song, Thank You, Thank You, Jesus, I Can't Live Without You? Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, in my soul. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, in my soul. I can't live without you, Lord. 
I can't live without you. I can't live without you in my soul. I can't live without you. I can't live without you. I can't live without you in my soul. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, in my soul. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, in my soul. I can't live without you. I can't live without you. I can't live without you in my soul. I can't live without you. I can't live without you. I can't live without you in my soul. Lord, I mean it. I can't live without you. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for coming into my life and changing me. Thank you for indwelling me and giving me the power of your Holy Spirit to live the life that you want us to live. Oh, thank you, Lord, for choosing me in Jesus' name. Bless your people, your children now who are getting ready to go to bed. Oh, bless them abundantly. Give them sweet dreams, Lord. Embrace each one of them wherever they are. May they know your presence and your love. May they not be lonely. Smile upon them, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I pray that you've been refreshed. I pray that you'll rise up from wherever you are and believe that whatever you gave to the Lord will not come back. You left it with the Lord. Now go and live in peace and be healthy and live in the praises of God. A lot of times we invite these sicknesses back because we get grouchy. How many of you know that grouchiness can attract illnesses and aches and pains? Well, be happy in the Lord. Amen. I love you all. Tomorrow night we're going to have our discipleship class and then Friday night our youth class. So until then, God bless you. I love you and have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow. Aloha.